Sick. So we are currently at a store. A uh, excuse me. We are currently at sitting outside. Say Dinitas at a lovely little Cuban cafe, just simply called Cafe Cubano. We talked to a friendly orc shoeshine man. We also met a street doc, got Mako all healed up, did some armor repair for him, and now we're currently waiting for our clothes to be tailored because we have a, a gnome in the group and a troll, <laughs> and neither of them really can wear things off the shelf. Uh, anything else we want to do while we're sitting on the, the Zampato, Zampato walkway? Uh, oh, we're going to take showers. Oh, yeah, though that's where we were. You're right. Before we went on break, we, we went off to the showers. And Capsize wants to hack the showers so that you guys don't have to pay <laughs> for them. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and uh, roll me your, your hacking. Do it. Three success. All right. And we'll say this is probably very easy. Uh, you got no hits, so you managed to get a mark onto a shower and <laughs> just get it to turn like, you know, all the little lights on the front of the shower or the little AR face were all showing like like red, like unpaid, and suddenly they turn green on the three of them. Were you doing all of them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just like, mm -hmm. hold on, guys. I can... I can get us in and I just like stand there and do th like just do it in my brain or whatever and then click all of them will unlock like one by one and I feel like there we go all that right. was easy <laughs> that was easy do you want to do the same thing to the uh, the soap dispensers sure <laughs> all right roll it, roll it again get everything all all the fanciness for everyone this is where the difficulty comes in. Oh no! Oh damn! Oh, damn. The, the soap dispensers just keep putting out like unpaid Nuyen, unpaid Nuyen. Right. You get them like to turn on for a little bit, they dribble down a little bit of soap, and then they cut off. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just like say, because it's probably like Titans in a style, I'm in a style, but Mako's in a style. I'm just like out loud to be like, I hope you guys are okay without soap. Uh, it's stronger than I thought it was. <laughs> is the water good? Is it hot water or uh, cold water? Uh, they they're on the colder side, but again, it's super hot outside, being the Caribbean in the middle of summer. That's and true. Yeah. what kind of soap so. dispenser is this? Like built in the wall, or is it built onto the wall? Like, can I pop the face off <laughs> of it and steal the soap? So you're seeing the 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 display in AR above you. Uh, it is actually like it's eight foot ceilings, so you're still a little bit too tall, Titan. <laughs> but it's better than other I, places you've been. A racist Cuba. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it looks like they're intended to be that tall, so it's hard for people to tamper with the shower heads. <laughs> but you being so tall, it's right there. <laughs> it uh, so the shower head is in the very like in the ceiling, and next to it is a little kind of smaller looking shower head. <laughs> The dispenses soap and or shampoo, some type of mixture, depending on what you hit in the AR screen. Uh, can I try and rip it off so that it'll just leak soap? <laughs> uh, yeah. Go ahead and give me like a like a close combat roll, just like the or strength, whichever. Uh, I will use close combat because I get a plus two because of my uh. Uh, special ability. <laughs> What's your special ability? Do remind us. Uh, you... Oh, versus just... structures? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what was that for? Smashing blow, essentially. Oh, that's right, because you're an adept. Uh, alright, let's see, let's see how you do. Oh! <laughs> So you Stupid slippery. <laughs> you grab hold of it. You start pulling out. Is that what it is? Do you want to describe it? Is it slippery? What's this look like when you reach up and grab a hold of the shower head? So this thing got paid for before and has been used today. So it's not freshly clean. And it's got soap dripping out of it. So when I go up and grab it, it just kind of coats my hand. And when I try and get her to rip, I kind of just pull back and stumble back into the door of the shower and almost break the door off the hinges. <laughs> so the other two of you hear this kind of awful crash. 
Jeez, Titan, what are you doing? There's no soap. How are you slipping? <laughs> I tried to get soap. <sighs> Hold on. Wait, if you're that desperate, um, I'm going to try hacking again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to spend a plot point to add a glitch die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will remind you guys. Right. <laughs> I'll remind you guys as well. Uh, in the rules section, I do have one for plot points in there, in the handouts. You should be able to see this, yeah. and that gives you an examples of what y'all you can use your plot points and stuff for. Uh, I've got the book up, and I realized I had these as nice little handouts. But yeah, go ahead and uh, do your hacking. We'll say, you know, we'll we'll do it. Oh no, 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 he he did a glitch guy. I was gonna say you could do the negative two for essentially try again, but we'll we'll just roll with it with the glitch die and see what happens. <laughs> so I get four successes. Um, I'll roll. Three. Okay. All right. All right. You managed to to hack it, and uh, and soap begins kind of piddling out of it uh, with the water next to it. Mm -hmm. You happy now, Titan? It's not a shower without soap. Ah. Uh, the think you'd be the one that's fussy. And now I'll also just enjoy the soap. <laughs> no, let's think about that. Like, he, he, Titan's the one who's fussy about soap. Um, remind us of capsize the story. Like, where'd you come from and how'd you grow up? Uh. He was, I'm not sure if he would be Maid Man or just like a wage slave from Florida who came to Havana to do some corp and or gang work. Mm -hmm. I'm not really decided. One or the other, probably corp work, some minor like shipping deals or something like that. And uh, he got dragged into piracy, most likely forced into it, and then eventually just kind of accepted it and who he is now. Right, so you, you came from kind of maybe the corp world or similar. Even Mako, who spent some time in prison, you still had showers and stuff in prison, right? To avoid lice and that kind of stuff. Let's think about like how Titan has probably grew up on the streets as a squatter. <laughs> like a, how much of a luxury like this is probably for him. Do you wanna you wanna describe exactly what it's like to have uh, even a cold shower with soap, Titan? Like what's that what's that like to your character? <laughs> I I was promised a better life if I went with the pirates. Like I grew up in the slums just laying in the gutter like if it rains that was shower time like that was getting us clean that was mm -hmm. it we might might if we were feeling risky go to the beach and break into the showers and use them but then we always had to be really quickly because then you know the police force would be after us because tourist spots and whatnot so the fact that I've moved up in my life, or seeming to moved up in my own life, I want my damn shower with at least soap. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Alright, you guys get uh, all soapy and clean. <laughs> Managed to, to do so, I believe, without further incident. Um, after, uh, after that, and the meal... Uh, it's still a little bit early to go back to to read us uh, to to Sydney to get your clothes. Uh, is there anything else we want to do now that a shower has been accomplished? Good job, guys. <laughs> we have defeated the shower. <laughs> You've successfully You've beaten defeated. the shower challenge. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Like I point to the like uh, Mika's mohawk. I'm like. How do you even clean that thing? I feel like soap and shampoo isn't good for it. Stainless steel. Just take a good washcloth to it. be fine. You gotta taps it. Make a nice <laughs> metallic ring. You notice it is very clean and shiny at this point. He probably, like, there was probably a nice, like, layer of grime across his entire body from, like, engine grease. So he's probably a nice, like, tone or two lighter than he was when he went in. So, so I gotta ask, do you... I don't know how clean you are normally. I imagine you might even be a little bit less tan than everyone else, being that you're normally underboard in the ship. Uh, do you have like the farmer's tan because of like being coated in grease in different areas? Like, are your hands a lighter shade than the rest of you? Yeah, I'm sure. From like the elbows down, I'm sure like he goes around in uh, like with sleeveless shirts a lot. Like, I feel like he's probably got some some tattoos he wants to show off, 
and uh, so he has his his biceps are very tan, but his forearms are like a noticeably uh, a different color. <laughs> okay. You got the reverse farmer's tan going. Exactly. <laughs> good. Good. All right, you uh, you head out of the the showers, uh, and as you do, uh, you see two of uh, the Cubano pol- policia in a green uh, outfits, like walking toward the showers. They've got you know guns on their hips. They've got a tasers on the other side or or in the back, and they uh. They see the three of you and and they yell at you, uh, like you just wait, wait, like you know, the halt, stop, like uh, come here, we have to we have to speak with you, come here. <laughs> Has to be like yes, officer. All right, looks like uh, capsize is going the social route. What does Mako and uh, and Titan do? Titan looks edgy, like. He's not sure if he should run or fight, and Capsize has just tried to talk to them, and now he's really not sure, because <laughs> cops in his mind are always a bad idea. Especially right after you committed a crime. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mako? Uh, Mako looks a bit nervous, but uh, he, he kind of goes to move behind uh, Capsize, just kind of um, letting him to kind of step up and do the talking, thinking uh, kind of subconsciously that he'll essentially hide behind Cap's eyes, but due to the size difference, that's just totally not an option. <laughs> okay. uh, so as you you guys uh, wait, the police, uh, the two officers keep coming toward you. One of them's got his hand on his his gun, kind of like instinctually, particularly because Mako, you know, being the big troll that he is. Uh, but neither of them have drawn weapons or anything yet. Uh, one of them's uh, approaching you. And after Capsize addressed him, he smiles and he's is uh so seeing uh the amigo um you uh you just use these showers, yeah? I'm like and they're asking you a very obvious question. As you guys didn't have towels or anything, you're probably still somewhat yeah. wet like your hair. Wet. So, yeah. It's like uh yes, it's been a long day. It's like, also yeah. very hot outside. We had uh, we had some the uh, one of the tourists here reported some commotion inside. Um, but, uh, what's going on in there? I fell. And he's got almost like a, a wink and a smile. At, <laughs> like when he has to see that. So, yeah, um, we... as Titan says, I fell. I'm like, yeah, something about slippery. He was complaining in there. Something about the soap or something. He slipped. Yeah, we got uh, we got a message that said someone was uh, was tampering with the uh, the showers in here. Uh, um, was that uh, was that the uh, three of you? I was trying to get the soap and then I fell and accidentally tried to grab it for my balance and it probably rang off of that. It's not the first time it's happened. You see, they're not built for trolls, right? He's a little big. He might have bumped his head or something. You know, it happens. They're not. How friendly to him. He's a little con- conscious about his size. Uh, and These he... things really are racist. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls up a message in, in AR and he smiles. He's like, we, uh, we see these uh, showers have just been used. Uh, you uh, pay the fees, right? Of course. And he, uh, he snaps one of them. Kind of, he, the one who's acting a little more friendly, he snaps at uh, the big guy and he's like... Uh, let me see all. Let me see all your information. It's like uh, you, see, you seem to be a local. Have we seen you around here before? Uh, I used to live around here, but I haven't been around here in a long time. Uh, yeah, let's just see your information. He's snapping his fingers. I believe none of you have a fake sin or any type of identification <laughs> on you. I would like to use a plot point for a surprise threat. Mm-hmm. And I would like, I would like there to be like an obvious, <laughs> an obvious problem. Like someone's mugging someone literally just on the other side of this place or something. <laughs> and it's very like, it's like someone's like a tourist is screaming or something. Like, oh, he's got my purse or something. And there's like a guy, and you might hear like a gunshot and some screaming. And <laughs> the cat starts to be like, 
Oh, is that the incident you're reporting? Jeez, you guys should jump to that. <laughs> okay. So For some reason I had the mental image of Capsize throwing his voice and like hiding <laughs> like hiding his mouth behind a hand. <laughs> I, I hack a speaker and do that with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I need to look something up. Um... Okay, so so there is kind of a a sound uh, as a uh... and you guys you guys turn and uh, and the cops the cops spin you guys all spin in that direction, but what you see is not. A, a mugging, though that would be lovely and wouldn't that be convenient right now? What you see is this large f f bird flying <laughs> toward the beach. Uh, and as it fl flaps its wings, you see these beautiful green flames <laughs> that it's extending out from its wings. And it starts to fly over like this like, little cabana, like uh, umbrella that's been sitting on there. And like an oil just falls from its wings onto the things and it bursts into flames. And it makes this horrible screeching sound as this big phoenix comes like swooping over the, the beach and starts chasing this little, uh, little human child. Like everybody screams and starts to scatter and they're flying down. The cops draw their guns. <laughs> Yeah, and with that, you're like, oh, holy god, kind of, like, use this opportunity to, like, yeah. walk away, like, <laughs> that's dangerous, we should leave. <laughs> oh, Capsize might leave, but Titan is not going to think about his partners at all, and immediately take off and try and save this child. Okay, yeah, Capsize, you would you would know, having grown up in the these kind of poor uh, areas where, like, wood is primarily used to make the huts and stuff like that it's not uncommon for phoenixes to in a flock like come and burn those things up and then come and eat the charred bodies so, uh, if you want to charge it by all means let's charge it oh not charging the bird i'm charging after the boy and trying to get him so i can use my body as cover okay <laughs> all right no you can do that you can charge after the the boy uh do you want to like get yourself in between the, the boy and the bird, or are you trying to like grab the boy, like scoop him up football player style, and like run with him? Yeah, because I'm sure I'm a lot faster than he is. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming the, bo the boy, not the bird, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's go ahead. Okay, so you, so you run in. And you try to grab the boy. The boy. Uh, when you do that, the the bird makes this horrible screeching sound as you put yourself kind of between it and it, its prey that it was going for. You can see that it kind of like set this canopy on fire as a way to like scatter the people, right? And that's why it's now currently gripping the boy. Uh, let me roll. I'm gonna roll a, a close combat on you as the bird swoops in to try to to grab uh it's just going to to spit fire at you for having uh <laughs> tried to to steal its prey uh so let me see here uh go ahead and roll me your defense where uh should be defense is uh the attack plus logic def a plus l yeah Sorry, that's uh, if you look, I forgot I haven't we haven't used this sheet yet. Yeah, so A plus L is going to be agility plus logic, and I think that's the one you want for this. Let me double check. Yeah, because yeah, strength it's... plus wisdom. Oh. No, 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 it's a, it's agility plus logic. Okay. So it uh, it spits fire at you as it does this like flyover. If you now got between its prey and it hits your armor and begin. Actually, this is not. I need to stop being the GM who narrates everything. This is anarchy. You described to me what happens when this flaming bird spits a uh, fiery 
uh, oil at you that sets like your armor on fire. You describe what it looks like. Uh. So yeah, it's I've run in between the bird, and I'm assuming it's screeching and pissed off at me. Oh yeah, definitely. And <laughs> so it lobs this like loogie out of its mouth at me, and I kind of like throw my back to it so that I'm trying to dodge while trying to keep him uh, in between me and the boy and it hits the armor on my back and just kind of sizzles and it heats up the metal uh, yeah definitely the metal is, is getting really warm and you would know because of like the rainfall and stuff like that in these kind of areas that's why they these type of phoenixes tend to have um, what should I call it uh, uh, like an oil, and uh, yeah, corrosive like oil comes out, and that's basically that is what's used to set set the prey on fire. All right, fantastic. Oh, uh, well, we'll just go to we'll go to Mako next. What are you doing, man? Uh, Mako, kind of like just lets out a deep breath when he sees Titan running forward into this mess, uh, and then kind of reluctantly starts to kind of run towards the bird and really doesn't have any weapons on him or anything. He just starts jumping around, like, yelling at it. And, like, hey, hey, over here, over here! <laughs> and he's waving his arms around frantically. <laughs> okay. Just trying to get its attention. You got, uh, you got an intimidation roll or anything of that nature? Uh, Maybe just charisma? Nope, uh, I'm assuming that's just charisma. <laughs> All right, straight charisma. Nada. Nada. All right, let's see, uh, let's check out some composure on this, this bird. Alright, uh, it seems very undeterred by you as it just kind of keeps screeching after Titan who has stolen its prey. Oh, <laughs> uh, Capsize, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm a tiny gnome, so it's like, think about I'm a mouse and that's an owl. Uh, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to run. He's going to run and just like, maybe maybe around the showers, it's like a, well, for like a normal person be like a hit, like a waist high wall or something mm -hmm. uh he's gonna prop himself on it and kind of like peer over it uh watching titan and make him <laughs> you know <laughs> fuck around with this thing so you just see like the top like the bridge of his nose and his eye or just like the under of his nose and his eyes mm -hmm. and then there and then it's like you guys uh what the fuck are you doing <laughs> leadership can i just like um i don't know if there's leadership let's find out let's uh let me look at this I, I, I don't have it but yeah is there something charisma. leadership like uh you can do charisma we'll figure out how it applies cool <laughs> it just be like <laughs> just, just don't die i kind of need you guys and you know you can do it uh two successes two successes all right um yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll 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 play that as if it was leadership. That we'll give a we'll give like an extra bonus dice on whatever their next action is. Uh, since you got, uh, yeah. and we'll give we'll give it the plus two. So as <laughs> you guys type, like, don't kill yourselves. I need you. Um, <laughs> we'll go back around to uh, the guards have, have pulled their guns. Uh, they're yelling in Spanish like at the the tourists. Essentially, you know, get out of the way, and they're they're trying to usher people behind. Um, they, they pop off a few rounds at this bird, but it manages to kind of slip past it. Uh, Mako, what are you doing? You're currently shielding this boy, I believe. What are you, uh, what are you doing next as this bird seems to still be intent on you very angrily having stole its food? Yeah, Mako. When we use the body swap jutsu. <laughs> Not Mako, I think I said Titan. Titan, it's just a Titan. <laughs> I'm going to try and scoop the boy up. And run towards the um, showers and toss them in it. Okay. <laughs> uh, give me, give me an athletics check. Uh, I think it's just straight agility if you don't have athletics. Two. I plus have two. Athletics. Plus two. Yeah, plus two for the <laughs> the uh, the cap size talk. All right, we have four hits. Let me. Uh, let's see what the birds got to offer. Does it got some athletics? Can it try to stay up with you? What's it got here? Uh, oh, it's got it's got flight. It's got fight. Let's see how to do. It. Flight is totally not a skill in this game, so I'm just gonna call it athletics <laughs> for now. It's about the same for a bird, right? Uh, 
Let's see. What's a god here? We'll say it's that. Uh, we'll say it's that. Uh. Alright. Alright, you managed to, to get some distance on it. You, The bird's kind of flapping at you. It's circling back around as Mako is uh, making noise on it. And you managed to get that kid and run and, and throw him in the showers. Like, in, the, uh, in that building. Uh, as the bird's kind of swoops down and is going to, to spit, spit at you one more time. As you've uh, taken off. Let me see, check his range on this. How far can they do this normally? Yeah, we'll do that. All right, he is going to spit at you as you're running away with his tasty foodstuffs. Uh, so go ahead, give me your uh, your agility plus logic. All right, fantastic. Kind of similar to just spitting, starts corroding your armor. Good thing you rebuilt that uh, that fantastic armor that someone else broke. It's really coming in handy. I was. <laughs> I like to think on one side you got something that says like uh, no fuego, it's like no smoking, and it's just it's spitting on that, and that's what's burning <laughs> that part of the a sign on your armor, and it's uh, it's having no effect on you. All right. Maybe uh, maybe it just says beware of phoenix. Beware, yeah, beware of phoenix. <laughs> I feel like it's more like a cor. It could be like a corporate logo back there with the phoenix on there. <laughs> I think it's phoenix security systems or something like that, or, mm -hmm. Fe or phoenix, phoenix. Maybe it's a new like a kind of like a KFC, all Spanish style, and it's all like hot and spicy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Uh, okay, uh, Mako, what do you what do you want to do? This bird has flown uh, on. Uh, your your teammate has successfully stowed the boy away inside the showers. Is the bird the bird's still there, or is it? Uh... Uh, yeah, it, it's circling back around. It was chasing after Titan, who managed to outrun it. I guess he's gonna look for like a bucket of water, or like a hose, or anything. Uh, again, I don't think he has his gut on him, so he's gonna look around for some sort of, uh, of water or even hell, just like a bottle of something he can throw this damn thing. You, give me, give me your engineering roll. Let's uh, let's see, let's see what you can do. No kids playing on the beach with their buckets of sand. So like a water, like a, like a fire hydrant that happens to be flying around or something? Uh, there are, so like similar to the showers you did, they're somewhat aren't enclosed, and they have uh, kind of just uh, the hose where you can like wash off your feet or any of your gear you got. You do see that there. You want to describe what you do with five hits in engineering, which is pretty fantastical. Uh, yeah, I think he spots like a valve down there at the bottom, maybe like a, a couple cutoff valves for the other other showers. And he hits those, uh, he just goes up and kicks them and essentially jams them shut so that it forces all the water through a single one of the, uh, single one of the apertures. And this just starts kind of like spraying the area with water. <laughs> just, uh, probably at random, just trying to deter the, the Phoenix to go somewhere else. Alright, let's, uh... Yeah, so you managed to hit it right on and it seems, uh, you blasted enough that it kind of shoots off course. And and wavers for a minute and actually hits the ground, and then it uh, it gets back up and kind of shakes its feathers out and takes off again in the sky. And it seems really perturbed by this and <laughs> just immediately starts flying off as if it's given up on this uh, this quest for food. Between that and the, the guard shooting at it, uh, your hose seems to have taken a lot of the fight out of it. <laughs> You're spraying it down with water. Um, all right, Phoenix. Phoenix dealt with. Uh, Mako, as you, uh, a mom runs up to you and then starts yelling for her her little boy who's named uh, Gerald. Like Gerald, Gerald. Oh God. Uh, and she's uh, she's trying to like run past you. Um, I'll I'll just step aside and open the door so she can get Gerald out of the showers. Alright, she, she starts ushering the thing and she, she looks right and she's, oh, thank you, thank you. And she, she's ushering Gerald away who's, who looks a little shaken still, uh, given all that just happened, but uh, he seems to be, for the most part, unharmed, despite this uh, the phoenix trying to eat him. <laughs> you know, that is the third time that has happened in my life and it's still shitty every time. 
<laughs> I think Mako's probably spraying you down at this point. I feel like there's still uh, still a couple of flames on your back. <laughs> you may not even be aware of them through your armor, but uh, he's just like, Titan, third around, and then he just hoses you down. <laughs> <laughs> just hear this hissing and pop as the metal bends and creaks. We just really uh, end up making your armor even stronger and like forging it into something more now. <laughs> yeah, the the flames from the phoenix have kind of melted some of it together. You guys didn't have a welder or anything, but this has essentially done the job, so it's even more molded together. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Sublime, uh, are are you here with us, good sir? Okay, so let me describe what you've been doing since we've just finished the scene of the Great Phoenix attack. You you took Attila with Thunder to find a street dock. You left uh, Attila to do somebody uh, on hand, and you left him with that. It looks like it was probably a family member or something uh, who, who maybe he had connections with, and you left him there. You've then been looking for your team uh, for the rest of the city. That was... Let me start with first... You arrived back in Havana, kind of at sunrise. You and Thunder immediately took Attila to find him someplace to rest in the Syria seat dock. You did that. And then you went and... Uh, that took, you know, most of the morning till about noon or so. Uh, then you went looking for your crewmates who... I don't think... Do you have a comm link by chance? Um, nope, I have rope. Okay. So you've been looking for your teammates <laughs> since then. Well, somebody um, trade me a cobbling for rope. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to bargain cobbling for rope. Uh, and not having much luck. Uh, but you you do find... Uh, you, after a while, you're just like, you know, I'm just going to get on one of these tour buses and, and ride around and uh, hopefully maybe I'll see them. If nothing else, it goes past... Uh, Cristio Balde Colone's cemetery later, right? You know, that's where you had agreed to meet up with. If nothing else, you'd meet them at the at the cemetery. Um. So, so perhaps you're headed back that way, having uh found a, a set of clothes through maybe some pe connections you have in Zokpop, uh, based that you know. I think Mama Pavre is your uh, connect your char your character's contact, right? Um. Uh, yeah, I believe that was what. We had decided. Yeah, so I'm still in the process of swapping character sheets. So maybe you went to you went to see Mama, and uh, she wasn't available, but somebody there was able to offer you a place to to rest, to sleep, to eat something, and to get changed, uh, and feeling more like yourself. And now you're kind of waiting for your team there, uh, just to catch you up on what. I'll let, I'll let them talk about what you see in in character. Uh, if you guys don't have anything else to do from the beach. You can, you know, go get your outfits, you're changed, you're clean. Uh, you still, one of you has what is questionably not even real shoes. It seems like just straps of leather, <laughs> leather tied to their feet. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, you guys have uh, brand new, nice, stylish out outfits thanks to Rita Valdez. They fit perfectly, they look wonderful, they smell nice. Uh, it's probably at that point you realize the, why the old man was talking to you and you look down and like I think two of you have two very worn rough boots probably that have been uh, made smellier by the fact you had salt water in them last night and whatnot. <laughs> they clash a little bit with your new outfits but that's okay. You, uh, you can then, uh, Buffalo Bill will come back around probably for a second time and you can flag him down, jump on the party bus. Party's still going strong. He looks like he's got people that are a little bit sober now, as if a, like a lot of the drunks from last night are either sleeping in the cubicles or have gotten off. He's tricked them into getting off at some point. <laughs> and he's got a whole new crowd. Most of them are actually sitting on the benches, having a beer, smiling, drinking a, a cheap margarita. And he's uh, he's driving them around and actually being a bit of a tour guide. He drives them past, you know, uh, National de Hotel. Cuba Hotel, and he picks you guys up and talks about the Zapata walkway again, and then he he gets you on and he uh, he asks Mako like, "What are you where are you going next, friend? What uh what do you have for the rest of the day?" I'm gotta head down to the cemetery to uh, meet a, a friend of ours there. 
Ah, uh, yes, 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 the Crusty Ballet Colony Cemetery. That's uh, coming up next. We go there next. Yeah, get on, hop on. You can uh, climb back on to the party bus. <laughs> uh, as you... He drives you back down to the, the cemetery. And there you probably see standing outside the gates of the cemetery is your dear friend Sublime, who you haven't seen all day. You wanna you wanna tell him about your day or there he is, what do you guys wanna do? Sublime, you freak, where have you been? Sublime is when you guys walk up on Sublime, he's got his back to you guys, uh, and in front of him is a small table where he's got three shells and there's like a small crowd of people in front of him. Uh, and they're all they're all guessing at which which shell has the uh, you know uh, what like a small like, coin or something underneath it like a bead or something yeah just something insignificant um, and then they're they're all they're all dead set on you know which one it's under and then when he uh, he lifts the the shell it's not there I uh, growing up in this area I've seen this game played many times. And knowing you have a good mark in the crowd to make it seem legit so you can actually win, I will make my way into the crowd and then walk up at some point and point to one of the shells and uh, see if I can get him to understand that I'm trying to play along. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that you guys have ever seen uh, Sublime do this. I forget what we had decided for um, for our connections and whatnot. But uh, but I will I will certainly play towards uh, you know anything that I, I see Titan doing and letting people fall for it if they do. My my trick is mostly relying on a subtle cast of uh, um oh gosh I forget what it is now. Oh no you know what I don't even have it I, I'm just playing <laughs> blind luck. Yeah, dude, I, was just, I, was... I, I, I meant I meant to make a purchase and I, I guess I didn't put it on the old character sheet. So you're probably losing money. To do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to wonder. <laughs> I'm doing felt... it for fun. <laughs> you're doing it for fun. Um, I would say, do you I, have? I meant to buy a thing, but yeah. <laughs> you have a. Uh... Well, I mean, so let's do this. You can either roll an agility as if you're doing like sleight of hand, or you can roll charisma as if you're doing a con. And, uh, you know, if you want to, you could add, like, a glitch dice or something to make it make I, it feel I was good. gonna throw a glitch dice. You're gonna throw a glitch dice? All right, all right, go ahead and roll me either, yeah. either agility or charisma. Um, to see, so agility as if, like, maybe you're doing, like, palming, or charisma as if, like, maybe you're even losing most of the time, but you're just doing it there for fun, so it's more like a show or a performance versus you're trying to, like, gamble with it, you know? Um, yeah, it sounds good. And I'll, just interacting I'll, I'll with the crowd. I'll treat it as a charisma. Just, uh, just, just passing the time with some locals. All right, go ahead and roll that up. We decided to, you got, you're at your three plot points again, essentially, as we reset the scene. So, um, okay. for the future. But, yeah, go ahead and uh, go and roll me your charisma and that glitch die. We'll see how you do. Okay, now do these sheets have a button that I can click to add a glitch die, or? Uh, I don't. That would be something that would probably be useful to add in there, wouldn't it? Alright, so there's the roll. And the glitch die. Ooh, yes! One. <laughs> Excellent! <laughs> Third time we've done that today? Yeah! Uh, no, when, when there's one exploit and two uh, two on. Um, yeah, two third, third time we've nice. gotten something interesting. Uh, so, okay, so who wants to describe the glitch? Is it capsized or sublime when you describe the, the one on this glitch die? Mm, you got anything good? Got anything good, Capsize? Um, I think you're doing performance, right? Yeah, just just entertaining the entertaining yeah, the I, kids and some of the adults. Yeah, so he's almost looking like he's more after tips, not related to gambling, but just putting on yeah. like an entertaining show, right? And like taking tips in his little AR feed. <laughs> I got I got something. Uh, yeah, you can do it. I was gonna say you'd probably tip something or you. Yeah, all right, we're yeah. on on the same page. So so essentially, you know, I've got like a small. Uh, my rope. I've got my rope on the table, sort of coiled there, and people are, you know, tossing just little little trinkets and things as a, sh a sign of appreciation. And as I go to like lift the shell, 
uh, you know, there's nothing there, and everyone's like, ah, and they clap, and then I lift the other show where it's supposed to be, and there was nothing there, and I'm like, huh? And then, <laughs> you know, I, I lift the third, and uh, it's also not there, um, and, and it kind of, like, makes everybody sort of startled. Uh, somebody bumps the table, and uh, the rope kind of slides off, and all of the all of the tips and trinkets to sort of uh, sort of get lost into the small crowd as everybody's uh, slightly confused and and bewildered by the uh, by the trick. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll leave it to you guys. <laughs> so yeah, as uh. As the crowd's dispersing and I'm picking up my my rope and uh, sort of dusting myself off, I'll turn and say, uh, "Hey, uh, where you guys been?" So uh, we walk up and we're all wearing nice new clothes. Oh yeah, you want to describe your outfits? We'll start with cap size. You still got so that. He has a butt, <laughs> a white button-up shirt that has um, some blue lines kind of going through it. It's it's his size, like it's. You read the tag, it's a child small. Um, mm -hmm. He's had some like swim trunks kind of fitted to him. And he has like a, a hay, like, not like kind of a fedora, but like a hay hat that you kind of see people wear down south. Um, and he just kind of walks up in that. All so right. it looks like brand, brand new. Yeah. Brand new. Brand new. Uh, you want to describe. Uh... Oh, it's Titan got here. Titan's got a picture now. Well, Titan oh, yeah. is <laughs> wearing a sleeveless shirt that is dark blue, like that color. And very festive. Uh, <laughs> he's got like he's got shorts on, and uh, over top of his shirt, you see that his armor's changed. It's not exactly the one. There's no leather straps this time. It looks like it's all glued together. Except for if you see the back, it looks like it was welted together really shoddily. <laughs> and it's over his nice new blue shirts. Okay. There's like a there's like an air of appreciation towards Capsize's clothes. Sort of an awkward cringe at, as I look at Titan, then I'll, I'll like look past him towards Mako and what do I see? Mako's got this uh kind of lavender short sleeve button up that's kinda of open in the front with an undershirt under that. And it's got uh, some nice purple uh, thread work to it. Uh, and then a uh, kind of nice set of khakis. And then his just busted ass uh, oil stained boots is still on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's just, just a nod. You guys seem like you've been busy. Did, did we need to leave? Did you, did you rob a place? Uh, well, we, we got caught damning the showers, but. Uh... Phoenix took care of that. Long story. But what but, were you uh, doing in the showers? Getting clean. Oh, together? It... Oh, no. Separate. Mm -hmm. We're not animals. Um, we got supplies, I think. Nico, you, you got supplies, right? Yeah, I met a charming gentleman down in the, uh, down in the marina. He's going to get us some supplies so we can get the boat fixed up and hopefully get it back in one piece before we go talk to Ginger Snap. I got Titan here, and I, like, again, do, like, the, the knee pat. Um, I got him stitched up, uh, with sharks and bullets and vampires. Uh, really beat him up. So, uh, some plump dwarf stitched him up. Wow. We never did pay him. Uh, I'll send him a cred, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I have his, I have his, I have his link. I'll, like, send him money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can you can send him money. Uh, well, uh, you'll realize like after after. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. We'll we'll keep that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna go risky as you enter into the. I'm gonna find some music here for the. Uh... Oh, that'll do. Lovely. That's not quite Cuban, I don't think, but that will totally do. Fa desert fantasy music. Um, to continue talking, otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and move this along right into the cemetery. Uh, okay, so as you go into 
the Christopher Columbus Cemetery, if you will. It is close by the Revolution Square, which is where you just came from in Old Havana. And this is widely known to be the necrop necropolis of Christopher Columbus. It's 140 acres of mausoleums holding the remains of over a million people. It was built in 1896. You guys don't need to know that much information. This is what Buffalo Bill is probably saying on the tour bus. <laughs> uh, so it is during the day, and even like this kind of later evening, uh, the site is uh, very full of celebration. Sublime knows this. It is, there are actual funerals that come through here, and people can use the cathedral to, uh, the central chapel, to have small funeral processions here. There has not been one yet today, uh, but and even the lower class people or middle class people can have that there. But to any more to be buried here usually requires quite a bit of money or some type of privilege. That said, there are normally celebrations held for life and death throughout the day. Uh, the ceremonies attire a face brought from the exiles of the Americas. So they blend this kind of big kaleidoscope of worship. Tourists tend to wander among the beautiful monuments of marble and granite and often mistake the celebrations as shows. And that's only perpetuated by people like Sublime who come here and do small performances for these people. <laughs> uh, there are a variety of people in costume and dress as well as some peddlers who are trying to sell charms and blessings and it's very common here to come, you know, get a mystical protection from someone claiming to be a mage, which may or may not be true. Uh, there is said to be sometimes zombies that can be seen wandering throughout the cemeteries. Uh, tip Sublime would know that typically these people are street performers who are painted up um, at as marble to try to like fool the tourists. Uh, so that's a, even this like kind of as the sun's starting to set, there are people who are, who are here either performing or peddling services and uh, and tourists just walking around taking pictures and smiling and enjoying the, uh, enjoying the area. Toward the center of it, you found the central chapel of the necropolis. It's an imposing octagon of Mediterranean design. Uh, anybody from and around Havana knows that this is owned by... Um, Zopop, and it is home of Mama Pavre. It's not exactly common knowledge uh, for the, the necropolis that lies under it, but Sublime knows it's there. Um, so there is a, a vibrant uh, amount of people. Some of them are playing a uh, kind of light music and things like that, and you see people of the uh, Santeria and Obeya traditions dressed up in costume and praying or, so, or talking to different Lao or performing some small kind of rituals. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk to anyone or do anything? We go straight to Mama. Um, I kind of want to... I kind of want to see, well, maybe Mama would be the best person to ask about this. You could tell me, uh, unless maybe there's somebody on the way. Uh, I kind of want to show somebody that uh, that dagger that we came into possession of. I think it was a medallion. Uh, it is. It's a red vampire amulet. I don't know why okay. I thought it was a dagger. <laughs> yeah. It is a gold amulet with a ruby set into it, I believe. Mm -hmm. And... I would like to know if anyone remembers what we did with our weapons. Uh, I think we left it some. They left, we probably like hid them somewhere, probably with the shadow runners or something. You guys gave your weapons to shadow runners. Well, we can't go around. I can't carry that huge thing around the city without getting smacked yeah, down I by told a bunch. You it was police. impractical when you bought it. <laughs> well, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's unrelated to the practicality of it. It worked quite fine on the boat against it's literally like, easier to smuggle you places the, like, look up at him and just kind of give him like the, the squint of the evil eyes just like stare back You're like don't worry I'm sure the 
criminal Shadowrunners have kept it safe for you. <laughs> I hear they're mostly professionals. Mostly. Uh, what have you been doing all day? First, you're staring out in the sea, then you walk off with a Shadowrunner, and now you're playing... Re doing street magic? And is Mafa Pavre gonna kill us? I feel like she's gonna kill us. She would never kill you. She'd sell you into a life of slavery. Well, that's reassuring. I, I won't go back. That. You'd hardly remember it, from what I understand. Why? Why would she kill us? We're gonna we're gonna bring her mostly bad news, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Ginger Snap is gonna kill us when we get the boat back. And they call me Shame. the dumb one. Yeah. Um, well, we've got this amulet. We could, uh, we could see if it's significant, and then maybe that will, you know, make her happy. You know what that- is it magical? You're- you know that stuff, right? I feel like- I feel like I figured that out last time, or- or if not, I will take a second and, and try to ascertain if it's- if it's got any magic to it. Uh, it does, it does. You see it glows up a little bit on the astral. Um, it looks like it's probably left behind, or whoever had it left behind, kind of emotional, had emotions tied to it, and you still see that there. And it does appear to have something kind of magical to it, though your uh, trinkets and talis, talisma, is that is that something Sublime has ever made or really been interested in, or is that kind of been outside his wheelhouse? Uh, he's been interested in it, but he's never been in a position to really study it. He's okay. never had a, a teacher or anything. Yeah, and this, uh, it's definitely, you know, you you got it from a mage. You think it might might be connected to or some type of talisman, but it's also not uh, anything you recognize as being part of your tradition or anything of that nature. Uh, which, yeah. I believe you are a Santeria mage, right? If I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just respond in that, you know, there's, yeah, there's, there's something there. Somebody, somebody would be able to tell us better than I, but there's, there's something to this. Maybe one of those old crones over there might be able to tell you something. They always sell these weird charms. <laughs> like, look over my shoulder. <laughs> really. Oh no, those are bogus. Yeah, they, they don't have any magic in those. <laughs> but, it might get you laid. And for you, that would be a feat of magic. Man, shots fired. <laughs> like, the beard's supposed to help. Supposed to it, help. It, it does, it does. You just see Titan with his giant hand cover his mouth and giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pat capsize on the on the back. It helps a lot. You look, you look a lot older. I punched uh, Titan's kneecap because, again, that's the highest place I can reach. I'm like, quiet, you. <laughs> uh, so, so Mako, who's standing off quiet at a distance, I think probably just watching all this silently, uh, a man comes up to you. He's uh, a very lanky, tall man. He's got dark skin. Uh, you can see from his hands, but his face is painted in like this black and white makeup. And he's wearing a purple top hat with a pheasant feather in it. It's very long, it's stylish. And he, uh, he's he got a lot of jewelry on and different... Uh, he's got, like, uh, on both his hands he has fingerless gloves that have a little bit of lace around them, around the, the cuffs on them. And he uh, he smiles at you very man, like, uh, can't to buy some magical charms here. Uh, you look like you could use the services of a wizard. Not sure if I need any charms myself, but I might have you take a look at something if you don't mind. It's like, well, I don't mind if I do, though. I tend to dabble in my own wares. And he kind of, uh, as he says that, he, he makes a, a very elaborate gesture with one hand, and you see this, uh, he's got like a chicken's beak that's painted with orange dots on it. And I tell you, I have all types of stuff that would let you speak. This one in particular will let you speak with a foul tongue. And he kind of giggles, uh, or, or gives you a very big, broad smile. Some would say my tongue's foul enough already. I see, and he sticks it back in the bag. Like, perhaps, uh, 
perhaps later then, and he uh, he kind of tips his hat and starts to to move away. Uh, unless one of you guys want to intercede. Um. Is anybody that is like recognizable or or pronounced within the the graveyard scene? Uh, he. He's the one that's most uh, flourished and styled uh, that Sublime probably doesn't recognize. You you recognize a lot of the other people as either devout people of like the faith uh, of Santeria or something who are here conducting their rituals legitly or interested. Mostly of them, though, they're mundane. They're just people who believe. And then you see most of the people you recognize as being performers from this area. But this guy stands out to you as someone you don't recognize. Uh, I mean, that's kind of interesting. I'll kind of raise an eyebrow to Mako. Say, uh, you know, what'd you do to him? No, they didn't do anything to him. He just he kind of shrugs. You see him move off to a tourist, and he's got out, he's, uh, you can't quite hear what they're saying, but he's pulled out, like, a black mummified hand, and he's, it, it's got really long red, uh, red fingernails on it, and he's kind of tapping it in their direction, and they're kind of laughing, as in they, like, the two women move away, you know, like, um, he's made some type of joke to them, uh, selling his charms. Probably just chalk it up to insignificant unless somebody else intervenes uh, will you uh, also find um, you would recognize uh, Mama Pavre who is sitting kind of in the church steps uh, which are, are quite large it's a the central chapel is fairly big and she's in like an old rocking chair and she's just uh, sitting there rocking uh, she is a, a much older human woman. Uh, I think I got a token for her here. Uh, she is smoking a cigar. She looks about like your grandmother, this lovely little old lady in a rocking chair. And she's just kind of humming quietly to herself and knitting. Ignoring really all of the, the performance and the peddlers and everybody that's around her. She's sitting kind of near the door of the, the central chapel. Could you remind me why we were coming to see her? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, to do a quick recap, uh, you guys had uh, been on a pirate ship that you learned was tasked to steal zombie powder, from which ended up being from Mama Pavre's ships, or kind of it was part of her, her network that you this was stolen from. Uh, you guys were attacked by the vampire in the chaos. You guys jumped overboard. You were then picked up by the Shadowrunners, and you helped get that powder back. The Shadowrunners were coming here to, to deliver it as well to explain to Mama what had happened. And then they recommended that you guys come see her in the evening after all that was done. So you would know that, you know, obviously stealing from Mama Pavre is, is not... A good idea <laughs> considering what she dabbles in in her business and kind of the power she wields um. okay that's right so i was gonna like look look at our, our little group and uh and then back to her and then back to the group and say oh shall shall we go and accept our uh our judgment what we came here for. All right. I will. I will put an arm uh, uh, out, or I'll put my arms out, kind of in uh, a non-hostile gesture, and, and sort of take a few steps towards her, and uh, try to get her attention. It's like a, you know, not not like a hug, but just sort of like that motion of, you know, I'm coming in peace. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, forward. she seems like just an old lady knitting right now, uh, who seems, she's not paying attention to any of the surroundings, anything around her. She's just smoking her cigar every so often, uh, putting it down on the side and then knitting while she does it. Uh, when you approach, she, she does not acknowledge you. She seems to still just be in her own world, working away uh, at her, 
for knitting and just rocking back and forth. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that reminds me. She is kind of particular about uh, things. Um, thinking amongst my, my crew here, have I ever seen any of you play um, play like a musical instrument or, or do, do anything like that? You've seen me break musical instruments. That counts. <laughs> no. Nada. Okay. Um, <laughs> in that case, uh, before before approaching, I'll I'll gotta I'll turn back and say, okay, uh, you know, best best to sort of ease things over would probably be to entertain her in some regard. She she's fond of music. If somebody knows her favorite song, and I'll kind of like look about all the different performers and see if anybody is uh is playing something that i think she might particularly enjoy yeah give me uh give me a perception check four hits okay you see a you do see uh, someone who's over in the corner who is uh, playing a very kind of almost slow and sad melody on like a cello, uh, and it has attracted several people have, have thrown money in it as they've gone by, but otherwise he's just a tall, uh, thin human gentleman, older, who doesn't seem like a lot, anyone's really stopping to listen, but the, the, the music is very lovely that he's playing. Okay. I'll kind of like focus in on him and say, uh, yeah, that's the one. And sort of walk over and like listen until he gets to a, a place where maybe it's the end of the, the song that he's on. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll stop and uh, he'll look up at you and like, show you request a tune, friend. Um, How would I remember a song she would like? Or do I just know one? Um, you would know that it's usually more the gesture and the quality of the performance versus, uh, versus like her favorite, anything she favors. Um, she's, okay. you've, you've seen her be entertained by, by jugglers or people with a trick or magicians with some type of illusion. Uh, you just know that she favors music tends to be her, her preferred. All right. Then I'll, I'll just, I'll just ask him. I'll say, uh, I'll just, just, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, that's, that's the stuff, but uh, would would you mind playing for uh, Mama Pavra? Uh, he'll look over there and uh, see. Uh, yes, and uh, he'll say for a small fee, and he'll he'll kind of put his hand out. And you can. Uh... Do you take rope? <laughs> <laughs> he will I will actually throw cred sticks at him. I say he'll money. he'll tip his head to the side, and uh, he'll tell you what kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. Made of a durable hemp. I'll tell you one length of it, and you can. <laughs> All right, I'll take the little hatchet from my uh, from my waist and cut them however much he wants. I mean, we got like fifty feet of the crap. <laughs> cut him a length of rope, and he takes it and he ties it around his pants, which are sagging up, and they're now acting as a belt like, with it. <laughs> All right, so that was probably what, like three feet of rope. <laughs> I don't know, no, not even. Probably. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a little over a foot. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll say two, two feet to give him plenty of links so he can wrap it around. <laughs> All right, deal. Right. And then I'll, I'll kind of like put an arm around him and and walk him back to uh to near Mama Pavre right. and and sort of position him there. All right, you walk him back and he begins to play a very slow tune uh and she uh she looks fine she like acknowledges him first and waits for him and she's kind of she's still knitting and she's just got the cigar in her mouth and she's looking up with him with her chin down like over you know as her eyes kind of skeptically and after he's done she just has him get out of her rubber though i have no time for you <laughs> and she she waves him off uh, she does not seem to be uh, 
heavily entertained by this gesture, but after he starts to move away, she looks at, at you, Sublime, and and see what uh, what are you here for, boy? Uh, we've we've made a mistake, and well, we're here to do whatever it is that will redeem us for that mistake. I'm kind of like looking down into the ground and like kicking, uh, kicking some dirt around. Like a child in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'll, uh, it's probably not the first time. She'll Cat take her. could look like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, she'll take her, her cigar out and kind of flick the ash and put it back in. She's got these really long nails of different colors uh, that uh, at first you think might be fake and decorated, but actually are real. She's got a variety of, of necklaces that you, I mean. Uh, you would recognize as kind of belonging to the the Santeria tradition, and she's got other ones that look like they probably belong to the Voodoo tradition, and she seems to sit somewhere in between, and it's hard to tell. She has a feathery kind of blue uh, head wrap, blue and white head wrap that's a very light kind of uh, tealish blue, and then she's got feathers in it on the side, and she flicks her cigar at the and looks over each one of you. She will say, you know what, um, your Ross knows not to steal from me. What was on her mind with this? You know anything about that? I don't read thoughts yet. She'll, uh, as you kind of say that, she'll look at you a little bit and say, it's not the time for your humor, boy. <laughs> so I stops cracking a grin. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't think, do we, do we know, do we have any insight as to why we were tasked with this? We were no, probably just you, told, yeah, and especially, we don't even know that we were told to get zombie dust, I don't think, right? It was just no, you guys was really, yeah, you guys really didn't know what you were grabbing, and it was, uh, it wasn't even on a ship that had any indication that it belonged to, to her or her network. Um, it probably would have only been till after, or when the Shadowrunners told you that you realized who you had, uh, kind of ripped off. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember not knowing who it was coming from. I didn't know if we even knew that it was zombie dust. So, so yeah, just kind of shrug. So we're we're not the ones that do the thinking. Uh, yes, uh, she'll kind of set her knitting to down and puts her arms on the rocking chair and just continues rocking back and forth. And uh, she looks at the other three of you and like, what are your names? And she starts with Titan, staring him down. Uh, this little little old woman, it should look like. And she looks like your friendly grandma. And, and she's giving you that look like right now, much like Sublime is taking it, where you guys are all kind of children <laughs> who've made grandma mad for some reason. Uh, and despite being like 10 foot tall, Titan, you, you kind of get this feeling like she's uh, yeah, there's a little bit of you maybe is a little disappointed. <laughs> Oh yeah, Titan, Titan remembers being young and scolded by uh, his, the adults that raised him and helped him bring him up. Even though he was the same size as those adults when he was like eight years old, he still felt very small in front of him, and he's feeling that now. <laughs> and uh, he'll just kind of whisper like, Tit Titan, ma'am. She'll, uh, she'll flick her ashes and look then at the look from up high on Titan down all the way low onto Cap's eyes. <laughs> uh, I go by Cap's eyes, ma'am, and I kind of like bow my head. Uh, and then she looks like back up at Mako, who I think is wearing a silage hat to hide his his. Finn, right? Is Moab. Did I take the hat? Yeah, I think I did. Right. Yes, he does have the hat. So he'll uh, kind of nod his head and uh, call me Mako. And not like lift up the hat, just kind of like, you know, tip it towards her. Yeah. She just looks so much the same. Like, well, I shall have a word with your boss and let her know of my displeasure. Hmm? You want to take a message back to her for me? think you can do that of course uh, we uh, plan on seeing her rather soon good tell her next time she rips uh, steals from me 
I will make her one of my corpses, and she will. I will set that fiery red hair of hers ablaze. Sublime just sort of scratches his head at the thought of having his hair set on fire, because he's got like the long, like shorter, like dreadlocks. Yeah, and she's looking at Capsize when she says this, and she she reaches out, reaches out to you, Capsize, and just plucks, uh, just one hair from your head when she says it for emphasis. Yeah, <laughs> he'll like uh, no like wins right? He'll do the. <laughs> They're like, she's touching me, oh god, what is she gonna do? Um, so he does that wince, and like, uh, of course, of course we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deliver the message. So tell you, and that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, a friend of mine has been having some trouble. He's, he's unhappy, and he has requested someone to do some small tasks for him. Uh, I'm going to send you four to do that task. Yes. I I nudge capsize to keep talking. Well, uh, what the, uh, what do you ask of us? What uh, what kind of task? I shall uh, tap to the guy and my my friend Santiago has a uh, a pet or something of the sort that he keeps, and it has been. I don't know. He's been complaining about it's a mopier than normal. It's just making my business hard in some ways. Go talk to him. Find out what it is and deal with it. And where can we find Santiago? It was. You'll find him at Papa's old house. Uh, which which Titan would know is. Uh, she says it in such an infatuation that she's referring to to Papa Hemingway. You would know where this is at. Uh, unless anyone's going to ask, I'm just going to tell you guys about that later then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to ask right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think especially Sublime would also probably know what she's referring to, um, as this would be kind of a big landmark in Cuba. So, oh, okay. In Havana okay. in particular. And she will uh, just go back to. She picks back up her knitting from her lap and starts knitting again, and goes back to to rocking. So that will take like one big step straight backwards, <laughs> and wait for the others to to kind of follow and, and turn and. Th thank thank you, Mama. She'll, uh, she'll just smile and go back to... Like, she, she gives you a little bit of a smirk and then goes back to, to, to knitting her knit and uh, smoking her cigar. Um, guys, turn and start. The... Go ahead. Once we're like, out of the cathedral, I'm going to like turn to the slime and just be like, a, she, she took my hair. Does that mean she's going to do some voodoo stuff with that? That's oh, what yeah. you guys do here, right? You're like Am I super, dead? You're like super fucked. Ah oh, shit! If you make her mad, she can like turn you into a zombie on the spot. Just one hair. That's all it takes. Ah oh, shit! It's okay. We're gonna do this job. Well, I mean, you'll technically she'll probably keep the hair forever, but she's probably not gonna use it if we do do a good job doing this. Does anyone what? know where this guy's house is? I do. I'm just glad she couldn't reach my hair. It's true. You would make a really good servant. <laughs> it's a lot of physical labor. I think she'd want me for physical labor. Bad. <laughs> oh no, you're probably like a sex doll or something. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, coffee table or nightstand, but... No, no, I'd... Like no, the whole nightstand? That's, that would be what you would be? Is that what you're, th you're saying? Yeah. Okay. That could we could we I'll recommend it if I see you at auction, I guess. No. Okay, Titan. You're gonna you're gonna lead us to this guy's house. And uh, we're gonna do this job. Real good. So none of us become zombies? Just you, mostly. But yeah. 
Yeah. You, you better not screw this up, guys. If I become a zombie, you're all screwed. I've seen Ta Titan try to talk to Ninja Snap. She doesn't like him very much when he talks. Nobody likes me very much when I talk. <laughs> That's right, buddy. And I'm gonna pat his knee again. It's hard to tell the difference differences between punching the knee and you patting the knees, but. <laughs> well, so, so is it the Sublime and Titan and uh, Sublime Capsize. Titan and Capsize are are having this dialogue as you're walking off the steps of the cathedral and you start to walk kind of back through the central area. To, on the way out uh, as you pass that uh, Mako as you guys start to pass that lanky peddler who is wearing the purple hat with the pheasant feather he he, he has that chicken the beak in hand that's painted with the orange drops and he kind of like you know makes it like open and close at you with one hand as if it was just like squawking at you and just watches your eyes as you walk past Mako meets his gaze, but I don't think he stops walking. <laughs> yeah. And he's uh, just squawking this chicken beak at you as you, you keep going. Uh, and you guys can leave the cemetery headed to... Uh, what is it? Finica Vigia? Finica Vigia is the Spanish colonial home of Ernest Hemingway and is to the south of Havana. Um, and I think we're going to stop there so we can uh, do some some karma and what's up, some buyage of things. Um. Sublime can actually do street magic now. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely... I'm going to do that before I close the sheet this time. Because... <laughs> yeah, we, we've still got a little bit of uh, 40 minutes, but I think that's a good place to stop instead of uh, jumping into to what we're going to do next, and it will give us a chance because it's our first time like leveling in Anarchy, so we could talk about how that works. <laughs> Sounds good. Is, is there a stream going? Do we want to keep that on the stream, or how do you feel? Yeah, no, let's keep doing it since uh, since it's anarchy. Uh, we may uh, stop doing it for the next time, but I'd be cute, cool to do it this way. Uh, let's pull up that. I gotta remember, I got three plot points. I'm gonna keep those for next time, so I didn't use any this time. Yeah, I, I knew... From from having visited this location with a different character in a different game, I remembered the performers being a big part of this scene, but I forgot that I didn't know how to perform. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it though; it was good. Uh, so let's see. Let's uh, let's break out how we an we how we level up in anarchy. We got six karma, right, from the the last job where you basically guys did all the all the exciting, cool, fun stuff for the run. Today was just mostly uh, meeting people. Uh, I'll get some contacts for everyone as well. Or some of these I may not well, hand out, but I might make a sheet so you guys can see who all they are that you've met. Actually. We did fight off a phoenix. I'm just saying. Yo, that's <laughs> a fair point. You did fight off a phoenix. Uh, let's see... Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna stick right now, let's just do, let's just do Ku Karma, I'll keep, keep that as my house rule from the, the, uh, the home games I did with, like, the actual Shadowrun 5th edition, of just every session we get at least two Karma, so you're always getting some Karma, even if we're not accomplishing big goals. Um, I was gonna say, because also we talked about kind of money, because money's not really a thing in Anarchy, but it's still a thing in the world. Uh, I will probably kind of talk to you. I know you can spend karma to get gear and some things like that. And maybe we'll look at that. Whenever I refer to the money, I'll probably set some like levels of like small, modest, expensive. And you'll just hear the NPCs say that. And we'll kind of get an idea of what you guys are currently making. <laughs> and kind of fluff over it on actually paying for it. Uh, unless it kind of gets high, you know. Can we just um, can we just deal in various amounts of like cloth sacks of coins? Yeah, <laughs> essentially there there is and hard the of rope is now <laughs> and of rope. Yeah, the whole... <laughs> there it's is my currency. <laughs> there is hard currency in Cuba uh, for in yeah, Shadowrun. I mean. yeah, so yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> so it'll just got small, medium, and large bags of yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, unknown we'll, amounts of coins. We'll Solid probably cap. do something like that. We'll put that in your inventory of you currently have a moderate amount of money. Uh, I would assume since you guys started out as street runners, you probably have a small amount of money for the most part now. Between us or individually? Probably between the group. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> you guys bought new yeah. clothes and stuff. <laughs> they were looking pretty Some rough. Of yeah. <laughs> Some of Some yeah of I bought three shells and a rock. Well, he, yeah. you've also got friends here. <laughs> so I like them. Until we figure out how we want to like really kind of handle money with Bane Karma and then that, we're just gonna we're gonna probably gloss over that stuff a little bit. And if it's too expensive, and I tell you something expensive and you don't have money for it, it's probably going to be plot motivation to go do a thing for money, right? Versus. Yeah. Uh, Worrying about uh, actual money. That makes a lot of sense. We're not, we're not tracking ammo. I don't want to track money. It's yeah, kind of, uh, exactly. Feel. Exactly. If I tell you something's too expensive, it's probably the GM telling you uh, we're not going to go in that direction or, hey, you're going to have to go do a run or something right? <laughs> so you have money. <laughs> well, I do it more like that. Uh, so let's see. So you got, you guys have, we'll just give you, say you have eight karma for now, six from last time, and then two from this one. Uh, I may up that later. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, eight in total. Um, mm -hmm. I may up that later. I just want to get an idea of, like, anarchy, like, what kind of the baseline is for spending money <laughs> or spending uh, or spending karma. Uh, so what can we do here? Uh, page 70 of the core book is where uh, character advancement is. The core uh, book. The only book. The, well, the only Habits. book. Habits. <laughs> I and you. I say core book because I literally threw something at you that I homebrewed out of what Howling Shadows, as well as we're playing in Hard Targets. So, sin. Should all the Shadowrun books can work with Anarchy, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I don't know what people are feeling like improving. We got like attributes can be improved by spending karma equal to the chosen attributes rating times two. So that's a yeah, thing we I'm can do. Thirty-eight karma. <laughs> yeah, let me let me just copy this. Uh, I don't know if I have this anywhere like in the advance. I'll put this in the chat. Um, oop, I should have spaced that out so it looks better. Um, I can't. I give up. I'm not doing it. So you can improve a tribute, you can improve or add a skill, you can improve or add a shadow amp, you can remove a negative quality, you can improve armor, uh, you can buy and improve weapons and gear. Does anybody, you know, have something maybe they want? It sounds like, I think, Titan tried to steal the meta link from the uh, street talk, so maybe maybe you want to spend a karma on a meta link? <laughs> <laughs> or on a, on a, uh, a well, comm link? Well, I never did say yeah. I gave it back, and I kind of <laughs> just walked away. He, he did. He was trying to get payment. I feel like he gave you the meta link so you could call. All right, you can just put that on the sheet. Yes, you have, you have a meta link. Make sure you make note that you have, in particular, uh, Gutan's meta link. Like, right? Like, I'll spell that for you. Gutan's meta link. Not your meta link. You stole his meta link. <laughs> so that works. I just assumed I was going to get an angry phone call like, my friend hasn't been in town in three um, days, and he's the only person I know that has a <laughs> phone as well, and where the hell is my phone? Uh, does anybody have anything they're looking at for improving? I'd like to I'd like to buy uh, the first rank, at least, of Khan. How much is that going to cost? Should just do one Karma. I think, I think it's, it's uh, yeah. Let's see. To increase... This is the, the rank of skill in Karma. Okay, but if I wanted to buy up to rank two, it would be rank one plus rank two, right? So yeah, I three it, karma. Exactly, exactly. All right, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. The question I have is, are we? How many skill slots are we playing with? Uh, what is it capped at? I think in core is like five. Five. Five if plus capped, If you skill. want it to be capped, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, if you if you want it to be capped. Um, I don't see a reason right now to have a cap. I think it, actually a lot of the NPCs are not capped. Because I think I ran into trouble like that when I was coding this sheet that uh, <laughs> I made it all like like stagnant and then I realized the NPCs broke a lot of the rules the players are stuck with. Um, See, so yeah, I, don't, I don't feel like there's a, we need to have a cap. I guess we can readdress that later if we want. Um, and can I, can I do that? Can I buy multiple 
skill ranks in the same downtime, or do I need to? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just buy one rank no, right now. Okay. You, as long as you pay the cost, you we're not. There's no such thing as downtime. Get out of here. What, if, what game yeah. are you playing? I'm not familiar with this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, then I'll go ahead and drop three karma to buy rank one and two of Khan. Uh, you guys had a night to sleep anyway last night, so that would have been your downtime. Though some of you slept on a party bus. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think um, we've had a chance to sleep yet. Oh, uh, no, you slept on the party bus, remember, during the day. Oh, that's true, okay. There was a short rest that was had there before you guys went and took your showers and did some shopping. Short rest. <laughs> yeah, before sure. Before died. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got I got my con, and now I want to add uh, probably a, an amp, I guess. I would not want to. I want to add a spell. So that's those are those are called amps. You know, because we started out as street as street runners, let's just I think let's just stick. Do you guys just want to stick with five karma, or do you think two karma would be better as we go through this? I feel like since we started as street runners, having a little bit extra probably would make life easier, right? Well, my damage is tied to my strength attribute, and mm -hmm. it's half my strength attribute. So to get another point of damage, which would only be five, we're going to have to invest 38 karma, so... Uh, all right, let's do that. Let's go ahead and do with five karma, and we'll assume that any... It will do, so we'll do, like, five karma every session until maybe you guys get two OP, and then I kill you all with a dragon, and we call it, we start over. Um, so... <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so we're all... You guys got 11 in total karma right now. Okay, eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Ruben, I would I would recommend uh, or Titan rather. I would recommend um, instead of well potentially instead of going straight for strength increases, look at some of the some of the amps. I think attribute boost is a good one that can actually give you up to three extra damage. Um, just straight up on every attack if you yeah if you take yeah. it like. But strength is also in my physical track as well. Oh no, I'm not saying it's not a very useful thing to get. I'm just saying when you're when you're trying to increase your damage, that's not the quickest or easiest way of doing so. Oh yeah. I I mean the shotgun I wield is nine P, so it's not like I'm out of with no damage option. It's just the main focus is a strength, so I was trying to get that at least a ten. Gotcha. At least a ten? What are you at now? Eight. Alright. So yeah, there's there's a lot of spells that I'm interested in. How much how much do spells cost, or amps rather? How much how much what's the conversion for amps to karma? I think you're paying one karma per each level of it. Page sixty five. I want to go back and forth. <laughs> or... I think you're. I don't even know the page where shadow amps are. I think you're also limited to six per core of amps. Yeah, that's, I mean that's okay. Per I, core. Because and... we're started with with two anyway yeah normally in anarchy you're limited to six i think oz has been talking about homebrewing some like you know if you get so far in levels and or no, there's no levels but you know if you get so far maybe you get an extra but i, I could see hitting certain karma milestones and unlocking another another yeah. skill slot or another amp slot or another quality slot but honestly like five skills and six amps are going to be more than enough for at least me for a while yeah and there are ways to build your own amps and to upgrade your amps so maybe something and uh, you could re potentially replace one and then you know build it up somehow as well so we'll worry yeah there's you. there's rules for improving your shadow amps in here so you can definitely scale up the ones you have yeah But if I just wanted to straight up buy... I think each of your spells should be three. I think uh, with adding a new shadow, shadow Amp, you're paying essentially one karma for each level of it for steps. So you'll pay, I think they're all what? Like level two Shadow Amps? So you pay one no. for level one and then one, two for the second level. So three total. Um, Wait, so even if... Let me see if it actually matters. Yeah, so so no, some some of them are one, some of them are two, some of them are three, okay. for for spells. None, they don't have. Well, excuse me. I guess control thoughts do, does. Control thoughts is the only one that I see that actually has one, two, and three available for it. Most of them are just like accident is a level three amp or mm -hmm. mana bolt is a level two amp. Things things like that. So. Yeah, so for your level three amp, you're paying uh, a total of six karma. You'll pay the one, the two, and then the three. Oh, okay. It it still does do the stepping stones. Yeah, that's what it looks like from the add new shadow amps paragraph. Okay. 
Okay, so it'd be six for a level three, three for a level two, or one for a level one. I can't get the major camps, right? Because that would require me having a cyber deck, right? So I couldn't get mugger or anything like that. Yeah, those are programs, and in order to have programs, programs. you need to have a the cyber deck, which is actually just an amp. If you just look up a little bit yeah. above that. So. Uh, which brings me back to another good point. If you guys find something in fifth edition you want, I'm perfectly cool. Cut out. You just cut out if we Sorry. find. If you find something in fifth, fifth edition you want, I'm still cool with like home brewing some of this stuff to work. So for for you, so so, uh, so if you, if you want to use cyber, some cyber deck programs, unless there's some reason it seems like it will break a lot of stuff. I would say you could just do a submersion as an amp and then take one. That's a good point. Okay, yeah. Because that's what you would yeah, do in fifth edition. Can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what the I can get for. It's cleaner. Hey Titan, I'm gonna buy the heal spell. How's that? How's that sound? I like you. <laughs> good deal. So. If I'm buying adept powers, uh, if the amp level is two, that makes it four karma. It'd be three karma. You're paying amp level two, so you've got to pay for level one, which is one karma, and then level two, which is two karma. So you do one plus two. Okay. Uh, is amp only two? Or is it not times two, like skills? You're probably right, cause I think you've read it. <laughs> Yeah, paying karma equal to each level you purchase. That is, if you purchase a new spell amp, pay one karma for that first level, then add an additional, or then to add a new power, pay two more karma for that level, making three karma total. Yeah, okay. Cool. If you're okay, I'd like to take exploit. Yeah, if you, I would just put submersion one, basically, yeah. for your shadow amp, and then uh, and then put, like, exploit in your comments. And we will... I can, with that... I could reroll two dice in non-combat hacking tests, so that soap dispenser would have been dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Todd, that's what you missed. We uh, <laughs> ate lunch, uh, tried to hack the sh a shower, and what else did we do? Oh, and I destroyed Titan's armor. Beautiful. Also going to go ahead and pick up Detect Magic so that I can actually, you know, detect magic in things. Oh, what was the other thing I was going to look at? Um, oh, I was going to add you some new contacts. I was going to hand these contacts out, but I think it just I'll just put them as, as handouts and you guys will know that you all have them. If you want to add them to your sheets, you can remember. Um, that you've met them, I will. You can do that. I'm gonna. You met a lot of people today. Who did we? So how much would it be to get willpower one to willpower two? So it's times two times the new rating, I think, right? So it'd be four karma. Mm-hmm. So it'd be four. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really say it very well in the book, but as far as I'm concerned, edge is still an attribute, so you can just. Pay it the same so I could also times two. Yeah. I it, might get edge two as well. It's kind of associated with shadow amps in the uh, um, when you're doing the character creation, but I think it makes more sense for it to just be a normal attribute, basically. Let me let me ask you this meta game question. Mm -hmm. Uh one of the things I really wanted out of care gen, but obviously we didn't have the amp points for it. I have the amps now or the points for it now. Um is it's under magical amps, but it's actually under the other section. It's called a protective amulet. Uh it's a talisman, which usable once per day reduces the damage from an attack I, I take by half, rounding up. Um how do you want to handle amps that are like that, where it's kind of giving you a piece of equipment? Uh, I mean, it would still be an amp. Is that what's your what's the yeah, question? Yeah, no, it's like, it's it's one hundred percent an amp. I'm just saying, yeah. like, how do how, can we can we purchase these and just I just voila a an amulet out of my pocket, or do you want to purchase these things and then have them like come up and play? Or oh oh, I would say for this um um how would you prefer it? 
Well, I mean, I'm, I'm holding an amulet that we don't know what it does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I mean, I see an inn. Oh, there's something, there's something plot related already. Uh, uh so I mean, least, I could. I, I would rather it come up in play than just being like, oh, I found a cyber deck, like you're yeah, going, you know, like whatever the item is. So I don't, I don't think what I don't want to do probably is me to have to like come up with a way to like throw that into the story. Uh, but yeah. if we do it this way, where it's like, hey, I've got this amulet, maybe I'll just have this thing, I'm cool with that. Um, and then I'll reveal to you, obviously, in character at some point, that's what it is. Um, or, um, so we, yeah, we could we could do it that way, I'm cool with that. Otherwise, I'd say, you know, Mama could have uh, maybe provided you with you or somebody there in the museum. Uh, or the, the cemetery or, um, you know, Santiago, who you're going to go see next, maybe could could give it to you. Well, yeah, so, it's yeah. it's just as likely in this case that it's it's something that my character could have always been wearing. Because he, he is, I, I have described him as wearing a lot of different jewelry. And it's just a thing of now I'm strong enough for it to, you know, for its magic to essentially have, you know, effect. Uh, having having gained this karma now like i'm actually able to make this thing happen because it doesn't even it doesn't even seem like it's something i use it just seems like the amulet will do its thing once per day is, is kind of uh the vibe that i'm feeling yeah uh i am i am good with either of those options so if you want to if you want the amulet you're holding to have that protection absolutely we can do it that way Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it, and um, it can it can definitely be that. Or, yeah, uh... that or you could have got it from the lanky peddler with the purple hat. He was selling magical charms. <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe surviving uh, surviving the encounter with with Mamba, I will I will go and and spend some of my rope on a, a protective amulet. <laughs> Your rope. <laughs> He he asks for real money. <laughs> he does not. Uh, he does not take rope. <laughs> well, he certainly should. It's an up-and-coming currency. You get it on the ground floor. <laughs> you just needed a belt. Um, <laughs> he's gonna be. He's gonna be wishing he had when hemp of rope takes over the market. <laughs> <laughs> The, the new crazy currency, hemp of... Yeah. Alright. I'll make uh, it happen. I don't have a picture for her right now, but I will probably get one later. Do you see the, the sheep for Rita? Oops. Uh, yes, I see the sheep for Rita. Right. Thank you. That was not in a position to look. You don't need to know her connection rating. That's not really a thing in this game. It's not. <laughs> Take that out of there. I see a bunch of people. I see Rita, I see Buffalo Bill, Capo Wan Wan, Vasquez, Ginger Snap, and Mama. Yeah, I need to put one in there for the bone gnars. I didn't I don't know why I don't have that one in there. Because you don't like me. I good. do like <laughs> you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know I said that very yeah, very, very convincing. I mean I do like you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, uh, damn, you got me. <laughs> I mean, Titan, we've just been so meaty this whole time. I feel bad. You've kind of gotten the short end of everything. But he's so tall. Oh, David, he's a big boy. Oh man, I don't like. I try and cut in, and I, I whisper to Coil sometimes when I do want to do stuff. It just it, it it doesn't work out most of the time. What are you talking about? Worked out every time. You saved a little boy at the beach from a phoenix who was trying to eat him. Turns out he's going to grow up to be some sort of giant crime lord, but you did good. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what? And that would be the second time that's happened to one of my characters. You know, actually, probably. Crime lord's probably not right. He's probably more likely to grow up to be a CEO, which is the same thing in a different arena, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think I caused that incident, but I enjoyed it. Better than doing with the <laughs> You did, but that was fantastic. You did, yeah, you yeah. literally got <laughs> I did. You spent resources <laughs> on it. Does the uh, right. karma earned and unspent karma and karma spent all jive together? It, it, it does not. It does no math, okay. if that's what you're asking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's... I was like, did I break this? I don't understand. Okay. Gotta keep, keep that updated. 
Um, that's good. Oh. So I I spent ten karma total. I got ranks one and two of Khan. I bought the second amp or second level amp heal, the first level amp detect magic, and the second level amp protective uh, amulet. Okay. And uh, and you're gonna use that uh, amulet that you have um, from the the vampire. Or did you um, buy one from the the the? No, pendant? yeah, I, I I think I'd like to have bought one from uh, from the peddler. Okay. Um, with with everything that has happened, I would definitely be looking for additional boons of protection if uh, if we are to to be intertwined with whatever foul spirits. Uh, I've seen fit to uh, put us in their crosshairs. Alright. So I probably bought that one and like three or four other pieces of jewelry, uh, but those were all worthless. <laughs> so Who are we going to talk with? Uh, you Santiago. are going to talk with Santiago. How does uh, the attribute work? Or attribute boost work? Does it work? So if I boost my strength uh dice wise does that mean i get a damage increase or no it's one or the other hey uh, yeah is this a is this an anarchy quality or is this the yep it's yeah, an it's adept, a... amp attribute boost nice. so you you choose an attribute boost so you'll have strength attribute boost at level one two or three and whenever you choose to activate that you could then get to either specify i'm um, boosting the dice or i'm boosting the damage you can alternate. Uh, you're all you're doing is specifying which attribute you're attribute you're buying, and then you you can alternate between either getting a dice boost or a damage boost, but you only get one or the other to each test. All right. Alternatively, it's it's critical strike right below it if you just want your melee attacks to deal more damage. Um, not. Not super well thought out amps though, because it feels like attribute boost is just a better version of that for the same yeah. prices. Yeah, <laughs> and because I can apply it to the strength, it also gives me a higher physical track. So, yeah, what page is that on? Well, no, it won't be. Uh, this is on page two hundred two under. It's the first one under adept amps. It won't actually modify your strength for your physical track it'll either add dice or add damage when using that attribute so it's not it's not giving you plus three to strength or plus two or plus one to strength it's just giving you one two or three more dice or one two or three more damage when using strength i guess the only reason i could see to have critical strike is to combine the two of them but i don't think stack. you can combine amps on a, on a dice roll oh no okay oh, really? i think you could only have yeah there's whatever page explains how to how to resolve combat explains how many different modifiers you can combine. It may okay. be worth looking into that. Yeah, I would have that. Sense. Because I feel like, um, you know, this is purely just coming from 5th edition, obviously, but critical strike is always something that just is there and all and all the time, right? And then attribute use is a thing you do. So I would think it would make more sense for those two to be combined. Um, not yeah, that that... See. Not that that converts to anarchy in any way, shape, or form, but it seems odd to me. Uh, it's like 37 has the dice pool, basically like the core mechanic. I'll see if it if it specifies. I would think some of them would, have, would combine, because they um, there are also specializations in this game as well for your skills um, that you can take. But I would think they would stack. Because Sledge has got some that would, might not make a lot of sense if they don't. Only one Shadow Amp can affect a roll's outcome. If two or more could apply to the test, you must choose one effect to apply. Mm -hmm. Page 38 under Shadow Amp Effects. I can you read that to me again? Yeah, only one shadow amp can affect a roll's outcome. 
If two or more could apply to the test, you must choose one effect to apply. Okay, but I don't think that applies to these two. Because... Uh. So that seems to be, to, in my mind, what they're describing is the cases where you have, like, um, this gives you plus two, and this one lets you re-roll two dice, and so you have to pick which one you want. But, like, Critical Strike just makes it so that you have more damage when your attack lands, right? It's not really affecting the, the test versus... The, the test. Yeah, versus yeah. attribute use, you can do the one, two, or three dice. That's affecting the test, right? Um... I could see maybe the damage uh, on critical strike and attribute use might not stack, but it seems like you should be able to do at least the dice roll and the critical strike. That is, that's a reasonable way to perceive that. I would also be, I would also be interested in playing with it because I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see if he gets the ten. But like, what's your damage currently do? Um, Titan, because you got right. eight, eight strength, right? So you're doing like four damage with your fists, basically. Yeah, and I took Killing Hand, so it's physical or stun. Okay, so let me let me look at Sledge. What hey, I'm thinking here's a, is here's here's that... a more, here's a more specific quote about Shadow Amps in mm -hmm. relation to combat specifically. Okay. Um, some Shadow Amps can be used in combat. Some weapons also have additional effects when used such as allowing the re-roll of dice that failed to score a hit or reducing the number of opposing dice rolled. Make sure to apply a relevant effect before comparing hits. Only the weapon used in one amp can affect a roll's outcome. If two or more amps could apply to the combat roll, you must choose which effect to apply. In combat rolls... No, oh, that's for defense. So yeah, no, I still haven't gotten to actually the damage value yet. Yeah, that's, that's still very specifically talking about the rolls and like the tests, right? But like the damage is not a roll or test. And I know I'm getting a little bit nitpicky, but the, mostly the thing I'm thinking of is like Sledge has eight strength, so he's as strong as Titan is. He can only do four stun with his fist, but he can do eight or six P with a katana, right? So what I'm thinking of is, like, if you don't let those combine, I think it'd be really hard for an unarmed adept to get up to that kind of 8p that a katana could do, or the 8... Or sorry, 6p a katana could do, or an 8p that, a, like, Ramaha Raiden could do. You know what I mean? Not that everything needs to be equal, but it just seems like letting both those two combined would be a way to, to really up that damage and get it really high. Oh, um, uh, well, I, kind of the counterpoint to that is a critical strike... Uh, and ad attribute boost are not specific to unarmed. They would apply to the katana as well. Hmm. That's fair. I'm still kind of on the side that I would def I would I would I would probably allow for the critical strike to apply to the damage, and then you could use attribute boost purely for the roll. Um, I don't know. We can play with it and find out. And at worst, I just have to retcon it and make you get rid of it. <laughs> so. Well, attribute boost I'd have to take for agility to even hit them. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if you took it for strength, like, it wouldn't, uh... The only thing it would be good for is if it gave me that plus three mod for, uh, my physical track. Which it would not, because it's not adding to your actual attribute, it's just adding dice. And that's mm. where it gets weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything. They, they, they never go into specific detail. Of, oh, wait, wait, hang on. Damage. They finally got the damage value, yes. I, I think I would be willing to homebrew that a little bit too if you applied it to strength attribute use. If you want, I would probably still add it as like you have to pick one of these, but if you wanted the three points to your physical track, might be something I'd be cool with. Um, some of the stuff we'll just have to play with and see how it works, but. Um, otherwise, yeah, it seems really silly to take a, an attribute use for your strength when it's already adding damage. If you took it to a
Otherwise, it would be like, it seems like the way you read it, you could do a boost agility. You could either take the dice pool or still get the strength because that's the skill is tied to that. Seems weird to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Long story short, unarmed combat is just awkward. Uh, -huh. uh I don't want it to be awkward, man. Let's actually let's this a this a character. What does Rose have? I was curious if she has critical strike and stuff. Uh, she does have critical strike as well as uh, Nox on 104. Okay. Who's the unarmed bad after? No, I was just really curious what she had. Uh, I yeah no no let's let's just homebrew it and we'll play with it and if it seems broken we will we can always go back and fix it. It's not a big deal. Just keep uh, keep a track in your journal how much you spent on it. And so if you want to do attribute use, I would be okay with you saying essentially you can do strength and you could take an extra three damage in your stun track. Well, even then, I think it's only two. Uh, is it only two? Why is it only two? Oh, yeah, yeah, for the... It would be one, two, or three, basically, for the level, right? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, like, if I do... Like, if I give it the mod, it still only gives me two in the track. Because, uh... What is that? Two to ten, and then it pushes me to eleven? I'm not sure how it works yet. Or I don't remember from last time. What what he's saying oh, is he's yeah. applying it to his strength, which determines his condition track. You're, you're telling him to just add the boxes of the condition monitor, but that's not what the sheet allows. Because the sheet auto-calculates your, uh, your monitor. Yeah... So one, two, you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to get it up to three before you got in a total another box, wouldn't you? I think I only need two. Yeah, I only need two, and it, my uh, physical monitor goes up to 13. Um, yeah, if you're, are you adding it in the, where it says mods? Because if you do the one, two, even just one, we'll round it up to uh, to thirteen. Because <laughs> it, it always rounds up. No. You buy anything, Blizzard, or capsize? Uh, I got I submerged for exploit second reroll to non-combat uh, hacking task. And I upped my whiz willpower from one to two, and upped my edge from one to two. Nice. I also bought Mystic Armor. That's a good one. Ignore one point of armor damage each time your armor is about to be uh, to absorb damage. That's a really good one. That and toughness, yep. They work well together. You'll be tanking in no time. Well, you already did tank last time, but you'll be even more oh. tankage. I was like, I tanked a lot. Yeah, you tanked a lot last time. What about you, Mako? Buy anything? Uh, not yet. I'm thinking about picking up some uh, a couple rings of first aid. Maybe a med kit. Since we're getting should, uh... uh Take mist form from the critter powers. Yeah. Can I take critter powers? Is that a thing we're house ruling here? I will take critter powers. If you, chemicals. If you're a vampire, you can. Am I? I'll be a vampire, sure. I really <laughs> hope he's a vampire. I spend, spend a plot point. I'm gonna get dragon sorcery. Dragon sorcery. <laughs> I love that. Even in anarchy, they're just like you can just cast everything if you're a dragon. <laughs> Literally, what the amp does. Dragons may choose from any spell in the list of spell names. Oh, you met Mr. Woon. That's who else? The other one you met. Oh, yeah. He's totally going to sell us out, isn't he? Oh. 
Is that a quality? Oh yeah, those are qualities. Okay. I don't. I don't think we can buy qualities. Is there a limit to qualities? Is that a thing? Uh, te technically, you are limited to I think just the four, right? Three positive and a negative, but you can buy off the negative. Um, Was it three positive? I think it's two positive. It's two positive, one negative. Yeah, that's... that we got. Oh, so. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I think I I think I more. I may have just put an extra box in there. That may have been me. I think <laughs> I think you are only supposed to have two. Um, do you want more qualities? Uh, well, I, I just happen to see that there's tough as nails, which adds to the physical condition monitor. I was yeah. going to point out to, to Titan. I think you can replace your qualities, but not pick up more. Shadowrun, Shadowrun, or the Anarchy seems to tend to do that, where it's like, hey, you want to just replace the things you have? Like, are you tired of playing this character? Or here's new stuff to replace it with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can only remove negative qualities, but I, if if people want new qualities or something, I, I think we could look at it. We'll see how overpowered and broken you guys get from street level. <laughs> what can I do with a single point of karma? Save it and put it in a karma bank. Yeah, it's, it's also money, so you know. <laughs> do I have to? Do, do I like spend it towards money, or will it just be money? How's that? How's that gonna work? Uh, well, didn't you tell me um buying, buying gear? I think yeah, buying gear is a thing you do with karma, right? So. Right, 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 right. Uh, your teammates discovered very quickly that none of them had any type of identification or cell phones. That's the reason the phoenix showed up. <laughs> um, I have one now. Well, I am a cell phone. What are you talking yeah, about? You are a cell phone. None of you have sins or fake sins, though. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, true. Technically, any gear we purchase, uh, it, yeah, it's two karma to either get an, one weapon or two gear items or one contact is what they recommend. Two karma for any of them. Okay. Well, that's that's how we'll try to treat this. I made I gave you guys the contacts sheets, but I would assume they they're not getting added to your sheet until you spend karma on them. You gotta be from friends with them. <laughs> You're cutting out on that one. Something's not getting added to our sheet because we don't have friends. I think. Uh, sorry, it's sorry. Your contacts, your, the con the people you met today, none of them get added to your sheets as contacts because you guys uh, still didn't. Us, yeah. Sorry, you still hear me now? Yep. Yeah. I was trying to say none of you guys get uh, get contacts tonight because none of you spent karma on them. I forget that's another thing you spent karma on. Yep. Yep. No context. Uh, and on that note, you guys still apparently owe a karma, I guess, to that street dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> essentially, to, to pay him and replace his stolen com link. But he's gonna have to track me down first. Mm. Well, <laughs> we'll put that straight to work since uh, I think it was the Batistas that recommended it. <laughs> The baristas. Yeah. That was on the other side of town. I, I I walked quite a bit. The Batistas. They're like a fancy coffee shop. No, it's a mafia family. They just really like coffee. <laughs> yeah. It's a common Spanish last name. What's wrong with you people? Uh, did none of you watch Dexter? <laughs> Bo just. <laughs> oh, sorry. For reading the alien well. Bo took 20 of Bunny's care packages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anything else we want to do tonight with Anarchy, or are we going to shut off the stream as our uh, buying and purchasing has come to an end? <laughs> I'm good. I am good. all supercharged and. Ready to fight a dragon next uh, next time. Does anybody uh, anybody spend a a karma on this street dock, or am I gonna put that on your debt list? You guys better not fucking make this guy hunt, hunt us down and kill us. 
I don't what have to show you. You have, be fine. You have what the you karma. karma? <laughs> Sublime, you have the only one karma. <laughs> it wasn't even there. <laughs> well, you would know about it. I tell, I did tell you the street dog picked them up. Listen, <laughs> man, you said you needed something to spend the karma on. We're giving you something to spend the karma Alright, I'll bail him out. I'll spend my I'll spend my karma. Alright, sir, then you get a street doc who sheet I is the last one I have yet to make up, who is a dwarf street doc. His name is Guten. Guten, I'll type that for you. Yeah, but yeah that's fantastic. You guys feel <laughs> like none of us have any money. <laughs> I'll go give him some rope. Ease things over. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend stole Maybe. my comm link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they keep that back. They mostly steal anything that's not bolted down. I'm sorry. Uh, we tried to steal soap. <laughs> or we did actually steal soap. <laughs> you did steal soap. Yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> so you could take a warm shower. I... Soap costs you two karma if you're gonna put it in your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> soap dispenser, Titan ripped out. Uh, I tried and failed. No. Uh -huh. He is a uh, he's a dwarf. He is uh, a potly uh, little fat man. He, what else did we decide today? He has a, a limp, kind of favoring it or on his left leg. He likes to drink old, old like. I don't know, can rum go stale? It seems like that's a good way to describe it, right? No. It, you just, no. It's alcoholic. You <laughs> Old rum, stale. but not in a good way. Not like it can be fire yeah. aged. It was... dirt, and sometimes he gets a cigarette, but he gets the bottles half off, so. Yeah, he's just, uh, it's, it's, it's like recycled aged. rum. It's like, you know, if at the end um, of the bar's night, there's still some in the bottle, they just pour it all together and give it to this guy. All right, that, that's called well, well rum. <laughs> okay. He drinks on the job, he's got a pot belly. <laughs> drinks on the job, that's great. Yep. Really, really picked a great street duck here, guys. Uh, hey, he healed me, dude. He? He? he used the hammer and a giant needle, but he fixed them up. <laughs> uh, I learned the gnome is squeamish. <laughs> Alright, and he has a street duck contact, is that what I put for type? Uh, yep. What would you have me put for, for Mama Pavra, since I already had her on my list? I think, does she need ex more explanation? Uh, no. Um, um she like is... what type of contact is she? Uh, well, Yield 5th Edition says she's swag, legwork, and personal favors. Uh, but Zop here, I'll put this. She's the Zopop. She's a leader of the Zopop. Zopop. I need to figure out exactly how to pronunciate that, so I'm not doing Zobop. it injustice. Zopop. So the Zobop have two leaders, and she is one of two. Uh, there's Papa and Mama, basically. Uh, what is... Uh, yep. Alright, all 11 karma spent. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the stream. Say goodbye, stream. Thanks for watching, everybody, hanging out. Just playing goodbye, some anarchy.